Sure. Well, th thanks, John. I, I just wanted to make a, a couple of uh, uh, quick observations uh, about uh, innovation from uh, the internet world uh, that we inhabit. Uh, at Google, I think it's obvious to everyone here, and clearly not an overstatement, that innovation is the key, is going to be the key to economic uh, success. Uh, it's how jobs are going to be created. It's how uh, economic prosperity, uh, economic growth, uh, uh, and all of those things. Um, and uh, it's very clear that uh, you know companies are going. The fate of companies depends uh, right now on innovation. In this century, the fate of countries uh, will depend. Uh, on how well they can adapt uh, and innovate. It's clear that uh, innovation uh, is, is the best way uh, to compete. And the development of, of internet technologies, broadband networks, uh, the powerful tools that are now available to everyone uh, through this uh, amazing uh, techn technological revolution that we've had ha has created unprecedented opportunities for countries, companies, uh, and individual entrepreneurs uh, to drive innovation. And the great thing about uh, the, the platform that we have now to innovate on, it's not gonna, this innovation doesn't just come from the top down, but from the bottom up, from lots and lots of people with the energy uh, and the intelligence uh, and the drive and the passion uh, to change the world. Uh, to try to illustrate the point, let me give you a couple stats about uh, the internet uh, in the Middle East. Um, worldwide internet traffic grew 62% in 2010 but the Middle East was one of the faster growing regions where the average traffic rose just under 100%. There are now more than 4 million uh, 3G subscribers in the Middle East, a region where three out of four uh, people, in some estimates, own a computer, uh, and 72% of Arab youths have, have used the internet. Now, listen to this one. Saudi, is the, Saudi Arabia is the number one country in the world in terms of YouTube mobile video platform uh, playback. So in other words, people, Saudi Arabia leads the world uh, in watching video on phones. Okay. <laughs> um, and that's when, when we uncovered that, that was really, a, really an interesting statistic to, uh, to us. Uh, and there's probably a lot of things going on there, but it's clear that there's a savviness uh, there with, with mobile technology uh, in the population at large. Another data point, social networking. Uh, dry, uh, getting getting really big in the, in, in, the re, in the region. The number of Twitter users, users in Saudi Arabia outpaced the global uh, average, rising by 240 percent in 2010. Uh, so it's clear that a lot is going on. Now, what, what do you take? What, what, what should you take from this? Um, a, a couple of things. Uh, first, um, it's clear uh, to, to us at Google that under the right conditions, brilliant people. Uh, in this region and all around the world are going to build on these technologies, these tools that are now available to create all kinds of new products, all kinds of new business models, all kinds of new ideas. Um, it's, it's very clear that there's no reason that the next Google cannot come from right here uh, in Saudi Arabia. So I said right conditions. What are some of these right conditions? Uh, an ecosystem. Uh, I heard a, a couple of folks were talking about ecosystems. You know, in Silicon Valley, a big part, you hear a lot about why Silicon Valley is successful, a big part of it is that there are places for entre entrepreneurs to hang out together, right? To talk, to talk to each other, to compare ideas, to work on each other's project. Uh, Google, uh, the founders of Google actually were in a group of six or seven other computer scientists, all of whom had a startup, and they all sort of worked on each other's startups. And, you know, three or four of those, uh, in addition to Google, actually became uh, somewhat successful. So that kind of an ecosystem. Risk capital. So uh, capital is one thing, uh, risk capital uh, is another. The willingness to, to, to take a real aggressive portfolio approach to, to, to investing and, and, and backing companies. Uh, com with that comes tolerance of, of failure. I saw that in, in the cartoon mentioned that briefly. But uh, that, the, the importance of that principle can't be uh, over, uh, overestimated. Uh, Silicon Valley is filled with uh, success, success stories of people who failed miserably uh, in their first, second, and even third times uh, 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 attempting to start uh, companies. Regulatory environment, uh, I know you'll hear a lot about that uh, uh, over in the course of the meeting, but uh, regulatory policies that focus on the openness of networks uh, and the power that that brings. Balance on, on uh, a balance in intellectual property between strong protection uh, of intellectual property, but also the freedom uh, for the public uh, and to, to make fair uses of intellectual pro pro property to build uh, upon things and create uh, new things. Uh, protection for the new business models to let them thrive 
uh, uh, and get better. Uh, the second thing, uh, and, and this is one that's overlooked a little bit, uh, that I draw from some, this flourishing uh, of, of innovation and, and the use of the tools, is that uh, there are huge opportunities uh, to take advantage of, of innovation that's done elsewhere. It seem, may seem like an obvious point, but sometimes we don't we don't stress this enough. You know, Google, uh, we sometimes get looked at as a company that, you know, has all these, we do have a lot of brilliant people, you know, 99.9% uh, you know, .9 are way smarter than I am, um, and they come up with great things. But Google in its development has always used uh, technologies, uh, ideas, and things from all over the world. Uh, software that we've used in our infrastructure to drive our computers, uh, uh, to, to, to figure out where people are located on the globe so we can send them the information uh, that they really want. Engineers who have made enormous contributions from, from Google, who come from all over, all over the world, who may have come, come up in systems that were, were innovative systems, right, of education and, and, and uh, uh, courses of study that were, that were based on innovation. So we have, uh, innovation is, a, there's a network effect here that's very, very uh, important uh, to remember. Um, you know, in Google, you know, even at Google, we're, we're best known for our search technology, but we actually have lots of technologies that, that actually can serve as an engine of growth uh, for companies and especially uh, small businesses. Um, we, we've, uh, we have things like our ad systems that are very, very easy to use that people can get. We call it onboarding, where companies can, can start using these technologies and really grow their businesses. There's a great example of this, and this is one of many, many examples, but that comes uh, from here in, in the region. Uh, there's an entrepreneur named Antoine Assi. He founded a, a company in Lebanon called Marble Mosaic, and his idea, he was going to sell handmade traditional Greek tiles uh, to a North American uh, market. Uh, he thought that there was a gap in the market and that he might have something uh, to offer. And so he started running an AdWords campaign on Google targeted just at the U.S. He's in Lebanon, but he was targeting uh, the U.S. Uh, and he saw his business just starting to grow and to grow, and he said, well, why do I have to limit to the United States? He moved to other markets, uh, and in a very short uh, amount of time, they doubled their revenues uh, despite the economic uh, crisis, uh, and, and the company has grown from two employees uh, and, and using sort of eight artists on the, on, on the tiles to over 40 employees and 120 dedicated uh, artists. Now, this is an opportunity that's available uh, to, to businesses everywhere. And again, leverages some of the technical innovation that's done uh, somewhere else. So I wanted to close with that, but I, but I, I do think that, again, you're going to hear a lot more about uh, government and, and what governments can do. But the thing that I would say that's most important is to uh, set up the, the groundwork and the ecosystem and let all the, the brilliant people uh, that, that, that are all over the world do their thing uh, and create and innovate. Okay, th thank you, David. Thank you. Um, so I, th I think you know w one of one of the things that you uh, kindly reminded of, uh, us of, especially in respect of that Middle East uh, Lebanese example at the end there, is that innovation in the technology space can be an enabler for traditional businesses to innovate and reach out globally uh, to a niche of customers who may be distributed worldwide. But w one thing I wanted to ask you before we move uh, move on is. At Google, there is a, literally thousands of brilliant young people um, running around uh, with terrific uh, number of ideas. And as you and Jim said, the permission to fail is an important part of uh, fueling continuous innovation. But how does Google actually manage and organize if that's even the right word, all of these creative young people, how do you sort through the ideas so that what you end up investing in um, can be hopefully the best investment choices? It's a great question, um, and it's, it's often complicated, but one of the great things about the internet and, and when you're in internet business uh, is that you can try things and you can experiment and see if they work and see if they don't. So it doesn't cost a lot for an engineer. We have some products. Google News is a, something that I use every day and is very popular. Yeah. That was done by uh, one of our engineers in his so-called 20% time. We let engineers sort of take 20% of their time and sort of do what, whatever they want to do. Uh, and he came up with this project uh, uh, product. We had another very successful advertising targeting uh, uh, product that was done by an engineer over a weekend. Uh, and the great thing is you can go out and try it. You, know, you can take 1% of your traffic and say, well, does this work or does it not work? 
Uh, and if it does work, then great. You roll it out, you, you build upon it. And if it doesn't, you, you try to, you know, you, you know hope no one noticed. Um, so I, I think that's, that's how we try to manage it, but it is, a lot of it is organized chaos, um, but, I, but I do think as, as you get bigger, you have to wrestle with, with, with managing that and providing you know, some more direction, right. uh, but you, you don't want to put, provide so much direction that you kill the, the creativity. So what, what, one quick follow-up, I know this is gonna sound an awfully rude question, but if I was at Google, how many chances to fail would I have before Larry would finally <laughs> ask me to, uh, leave the Googleplex? Uh, well, uh, speaking from experience, uh, <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> I'm still around. Okay.